David Knight, and I'm standing in for Alex Jones. He's going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. We've got a lot of breaking news. I'm sure you're hearing it. Even the mainstream media is covering the fact that the government is spying on everyone, looking at all of our phone records. You know, there's an old uh, ad from one of the phone companies that said, can you hear me now? Well, I guess the question is, can you hear the tyranny now? We've been talking about this for a long time. And uh, I can hear it in the background, can't you? It's getting louder and louder. And for those of us who've been watching this for very long, it is getting deafening. And we're getting sick of this. This is something that isn't new. This is something that is newly getting the attention of the mainstream media. They haven't been paying attention, and most of the public hasn't been paying attention. You know, this, this breaking story from The Guardian. And here's some of the headlines. Let me just read you. This is uh, The Guardian says... NSA is collecting phone records of millions of Verizon customers daily. Now, this is a classified document that Glenn Greenwald of The Guardian leaked out. And uh, kudos to him and kudos to the whistleblower who put this out. People need to see this stuff. Here's some more. Even The New York Times is covering this. How about that? U.S. is secretly collecting records of Verizon calls. Who would imagine that? The New York Times would tell us that. We've also got uh, AP saying government's scooping up Verizon phone records. Uh, Obama administration defends phone record collection. This is coming from the business and financial news. Uh, we've got uh, Forbes. NSA Verizon spying order specifically targeted Americans and not foreigners. Now, let's see, that's, that's the point here. Ron Paul pointed this out, and we've pointed this out. The FISA Act is a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Now, if you allow your government to act like criminals abroad, they're going to act like criminals domestically. They're going to be even more likely to act like criminals domestically because this is their turf. You know, they're basically a, a large gang. And when you allow them to kill people like this drone list kill, they're going to kill people in the U.S. in the same way. It's just a matter of time. And we've already got the FBI picking up witnesses to the or, or people who are just connected to the patsies that they're using for this bombing and killing them, shooting them six times, plus one in the back of the head for good measure. Uh, <clears throat> we've got the CBS talking about the Department of Homeland Security now says laptops and phones can be searched based on hunches. Oh, I've got a hunch. I don't have reasonable cause. I don't have a search warrant. I don't have constitutional authority. I've got a hunch. Let me have access to all your private papers, your personal effects. We've got uh, World Net Daily, WND, says now the FBI wants to backdoor to all software. Certainly we can trust those guys, right? Uh, you know, they're, they're uh, trustworthy. We can give them <laughs> access to everybody's information. From Business Insider, the same federal judge who struck down Obamacare approved the government's sweeping collection of phone records. You know, we'll talk about that a little bit. Of course, Ron Paul. Ron Paul warned us about this back in September. This is what he said, September the 12th, 2012. Now, this is before Ron Paul retired. This is at the very end of his congressional career. He said, Mr. Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to reauthorization of the 2008 FISA Amendments Act as it violates the Fourth Amendment of our Constitution. Supporters of this reauthorization claim the U.S. will be more vulnerable if the government is not allowed to monitor citizens without a warrant. I would argue, this is Ron Paul saying this, that we are more vulnerable if we do allow the government to monitor Americans without a warrant. Nothing makes us more vulnerable than allowing the Constitution to be violated. That's right, because then what we do is we turn the government into criminals. We turn the government into terrorists. You are eight times more likely to be shot by a police officer than to be killed by a terrorist. That's the government's own figures. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it. And I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not gonna spy on you and sell your data to the new world order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake 
and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com Yeah, look around you. All you see are sympathetic eyes. When I look around me, all I see are government surveillance cameras. And I know that they're just trying to help me help myself, right? They're, they're just to provide security for you. They want to make you safe. Well, who protects us from our protectors? Who watches the watchers? And they're totally out of control. As uh, We've been talking about the uh, release of the court order, that it was a uh, classified document, and uh, it is leaked out now through The Guardian that uh, all of Verizon customers are being turned over to the FBI and to the NSA to basically look at who you're calling, when you called, that sort of thing. And it is specifically targeted at Americans, not foreigners, as if that really made a difference. They've used this before to say that, well, if an American is calling abroad, we're now going to listen to that American's call as well. And if you look at the information of what they're doing here, this is exactly the same information that they collected on the AP. And we said at the time that this was when they came out and told the AP that they were looking at who they were calling and the time of date and that sort of thing. We said at the time, they're doing that all the time. They're not just doing that. They're also recording their messages, their entire messages. That's the whole point of the Utah Data Center. That's something that's coming online later this year. And this is something that we really need to think about. Just to put this in perspective, they're going to have yottabytes worth of data at the Utah Data Center. Now, what is a yottabyte? It's a trillion terabytes. So it's a trillion trillion. It's astronomical. Think about this, just to put this in perspective. You've got a $80 two terabyte drive that you can get right now called a MyBook. It's about two inches wide. Okay, I've worked out these figures here. Now, how many of these things would you have? They have multiple Yotabytes. We don't know how many Yotabytes, so let's just say two Yotabytes. They've only going to have two Yotabytes at the Utah Data Center. So how many of these two terabyte drives that you can get now called my book, how many of those would you have to stack side by side to have two terabytes? Put this in perspective. Well, this my book is pretty small. It's only about two inches wide. If you were to stack these things to have a trillion of them, you would have 167 billion feet or 31 and a half, 31 uh, million, 31 and a half million miles of these drives stacked. That's, that's two yottabytes. That's only two of the many yottabytes that they're going to have at the Utah Data Center. So you'd have 31,000 and a half miles of these MyBook drives stacked. How far is that? Well, the distance to the moon is only 238,000 miles. This is 31 and a half million miles. If you want to go to Mars, that's 48 million miles. So it's, it's kind of like that. To give you an idea of how long it would take to travel to Mars, okay? If you're traveling by car at 70 miles an hour to Mars, assuming you could, 228 years. Or if you're traveling by jet, 747 speed, it'd be 32 years. Or if you're going by a spaceship at 25,000 miles per hour, it would still take you eight and a half months to get to Mars. That's the distance that you would be stacking these my book drives if you had just the minimum amount of data that they're going to have at the Utah Data Center. Now, of course, they've got some technology that we don't have that's going to have that data at a much denser uh, storage area. But uh, the point is, this is an astronomical, truly astronomical amount of data that's being stored at the Utah Data Center. Why do they need that kind of data storage, because they are collecting every bit of electronic communication from every person on Earth for future data mining. Now, they don't have the capability to do all the data mining that they want now, but believe me, they will. What you're looking at is something kind of like the Terminator, where they're going to, sometime in the future, they're going to go into your past, and they're going to find information about you to incriminate you. You know, you don't have anything to worry about, do you? Well, what if you don't agree with the government's political views? What if your religion becomes outlawed? What if they want to blackmail you into doing something? Well, they are going to have the data. They're going to have your entire past set up at the Utah Data Center. And the question is, 
now that we know about this, we don't just need another church committee hearing. If you remember back in the 70s, Frank Church had a uh, oversight committee that exposed a lot of the criminal actions of the CIA and other, a few other actions of um, people that had come to this country under Operation Paperclip and were involved in some really shady biological, chemical, drug types of things for the CIA and for the government. Uh, that's where you had the CIA director Colby hold up his heart attack gun, talking about assassinations, that sort of thing. There were some little bit of reforms that came out of that, but not much. Not much. And once George Bush got back into place in the CIA, things, it was business as usual. We need to see some real reforms. We need to see some politicians step up, like maybe Rand Paul or Ted Cruz. We need to see the Utah data center, data center be shut down. We need to see some civil liberties put back in. We need to see the Patriot Act revoked. And we need to see some of these people go to jail because their laws are unlawful. Their actions are unlawful. And even when they've got a law like FISA that asserts that they have the right to listen to people's phone calls abroad and Americans, if they're calling abroad, even when they make that bold, unconstitutional assertion, they don't even stick to the limits and the parameters of these unconstitutional laws. They go far beyond that. Well, today is the beginning of Bilderberg. And uh, before we get into that, before we get into that, I wanted to play one other thing. I almost forgot. We've got, uh, we don't want to forget that this information that hopefully is going to wake people up. Again, it's nothing new, but we appreciate the fact that this has been made public. This, this document has been leaked. This secret court finding has been leaked. And that was done by a whistleblower. And I want you to think about that because right now, it's not only today is the... Uh, Chris Jordan just told me this is the 64th anniversary of 1984. And uh, I think we can all hear the clocks striking 13. Something is very definitely wrong in America. And fortunately, we had a whistleblower release this information to the reporter at The Guardian. And we should think about Bradley Manning. And think about what he did. Think about the ordeal that he's gone through. Think about how he's been punished and we've got a video here that we're going to cut into called I am Bradley Manning. Guys, come when on. you join the military, are you asked to keep any war crimes you might see secret? You see something that's so wrong. Light them all up. It's very hard for a lower level soldier to turn on his officers and say there was a war crime here. The whole concept of whistleblower laws are you cannot get into trouble for reporting about illegal or improper activity. I think we have to be clear that the cables were not top secret documents. It's an absurd charge to giving aid and comfort to the enemy. If you saw incredible things, awful things, things that belonged in the public domain. And not on some servers. Stored in a dark room in Washington, D.C. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? I was Bradley Manning. I am Bradley Manning. I am Bradley Manning. I am Bradley Manning. I am Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning. I hope that we are all Bradley Manning. And now what do we do about this? If you know nothing about Bradley Manning, you should find out. And then you should help me bust him out of jail. That's right. If you see something that's wrong and you're a government employee, you have an obligation to tell people about that. And fortunately, somebody did just that with this leak of this secretive court order. Now, of course, the Obama administration replies that uh, a senior administration official did not specifically confirm the report, but noted that the published court order pertains only to data such as the telephone number or the length of the call and not the subscriber's identities or the content of the telephone calls. Yeah, that's under a different secret order. We know that's what they're going to be doing at the Utah Data Center. But the interesting thing is, is that uh, this article then from Reuters goes in and tries to put a spin on it. And they say, well, this was issued one week after U.S. law enforcement officials tracked down two brothers suspected of carrying out the deadly Boston Marathon bombing. Come on. They don't have to get the phone records of every subscriber, millions of subscribers across the United States from Verizon just because of the Boston bombing. Is that going to become the excuse for everything? 
uh, martial law across the country, spying on people like the East German Stasi stayed on steroids. We've got a Forbes article here that says NSA's Verizon spying order was specifically targeted Americans and not foreigners. This is what they say. The latest revelation of the extent of NSA's surveillance shows that it is focused specifically on Americans to the degree that its data collection has, in at least one major spying incident, explicitly excluded, explicitly excluded those outside of the United States. They pass a law that says that they can listen without warrants to people. And, and understand, too, that the Constitution says persons. It doesn't say citizens. We want to try to think that uh, the government can act like criminals and mafia people to foreigners and in other countries, and it doesn't affect us. That simply isn't true. When you allow them to do that to anyone, you're, you're setting up a precedent. And so now we have this, this FISA Act that was put in that, in my opinion, violates the letter and the spirit of the law saying that government doesn't spy on persons, and now they're explicitly doing it to those in the United States and excluding foreigners in this particular case. CBS says, since his election, President Obama has taken an expansive view of legal authorities in the name of national security. Do you think? <laughs> that's, that's an understatement. But they do go on to say he's asserted that he can order the deaths of U.S. citizens abroad who are suspected of terrorism without involvement by courts, investigate reporters as criminals, and in this case, read and copy the contents of computers carried by U.S. travelers without a good reason to suspect wrongdoing. ProPure is introducing Pro One, all of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. This is the Pro One by ProPure. You wanted it, you got it. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It cuts out the acid derivative of fluoride. It is the only one that does it. And out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. This is a revolution against the tyrants. They love putting the toxic acid base of fluoride into your water. They love the fact that it's an adjuvant supercharging the trace Prozac in the water and the hormones and the other chemicals. By cutting out fluoride, you cut out the turbocharger in all the poison being artificially introduced into your body. This is what I use. It's a win-win. You get a high-quality product at the lowest price. You support the InfoWar. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Now, today they're showing up at Bilderberg, and here's a headline from The Guardian. Bilderberg 2013 delegates arrive in blacked-out cars for their secretive summit. Isn't it interesting that we've talked for most of this show about how our government is looking at everybody's phone conversations, everybody's records, their micro managing every bit of information about us, saving it to data mine, and yet we can't even look at our royalty who is attending Bilderberg. Just amazing, the double standard. Here are some of the headlines at InfoWars. Bilderberg member is set to speak on the record. Participant of the secret confab is set to talk with the BBC. Well, I'm sure that's going to be a great stand-up article. It's probably going to be a move along. There's nothing to see here. We're just trying to keep the world spinning. And, of course, that has to be done by corporations meeting in secret with politicians. At the very same time that in the U.K. they've got a massive lobbying scandal. And it hasn't been that long since we've had lobbying scandals. Remember Jack Abramoff? Of course, there was nothing to see there. We just move along. I'm sure he was just playing golf with people. Also, massive police operation effect as the Bilderberg Confab, 
confab convenes. <clears throat> Talk, what we talked about earlier, residents experiencing a virtual police state. And listen to this. The would-be world's biggest oil merger is agreed at Bilderberg from Steve Watson. Shell and BP deal would be the biggest corporate deal ever. That's the kind of stuff. Of course, we can't know what's going on there. And it's not just deals that are going on between private companies. The same kind of deals are going on between the corporations who control these politicians and the politicians who are going to implement their plans for world governments. They're breaking everything down into, right now, into trade zones. Europe is one of the key ones. The Euro and the European Union is one of the key trade zones. NAFTA is the other one. Once they can get those two in place, it's going to be very easy to break the entire world into 10 trade zones. Africa will be another one and so forth. Then just consolidate everything into one world government. And so what we have here at Bilderberg is world governance by a global elite who are agreeing to this agenda. We've seen leaked memos, and the BBC knows that these memos are out there. They've actually reported on them in the past. They've reported on the WikiLeaks documents exposing the Bilderberg memos. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. Yes, we're going where the mainstream media is afraid to go, at least the mainstream media in the U.S. And we were talking earlier about this leak of court order from uh, the secret uh, court order that was uh, kept under lock and key, classified, giving authorization to seize phone records of all, all of Verizon's customers. And... Breitbart has an interesting take on this. He says the mainstream media has failed to break even one of the four Obama scandals. He starts out, he says, well, if it's Thursday, there's got to be a new Obama scandal. But he says, okay, look at uh, over the past four weeks, four major scandals have broken over the Obama administration. And it's a very sad and frightening truth that our pathetic American lapdog mainstream media is not responsible for breaking even a single one. That's Breitbart writing this. Verizon? Nope, that wasn't our guys. That was the Brits at The Guardian. The IRS? No, that wasn't our guys. The IRS broke their own scandal with a planted question. The Justice Department's seizure of AP phone records? No, that wasn't us. Believe it or not, the Associated Press didn't even break the story about the Associated Press being spied on by the U.S. government. Like the IRS, we only found out about it because the Justice Department outed itself. And then he says, Benghazi, are you kidding? With a couple of rare exceptions, Jake Tapper, Cheryl Atkinson, the media has spent the last eight months attacking those who reported it, Congress and Fox News, instead of seeking the truth. Yeah, that's welcome to the club. I mean, that's what's been happening at InfoWars for years. Alex has been attacked by the very media that ignores the breaking stories. And you'll see that at Bilderberg, there are the owners of the mainstream media. The Washington Post is there, the owner. But you're not going to see Washington Post coverage of Bilderberg. You do see it, however, breaking in London uh, and the British newspapers. We've got a headline here from the London Evening Standard. It says, no minutes, no press conferences, just the world's power brokers chewing the fat on the issues of the day. It's the Bilderberg Conference. And it's coming to a suburb near you. That's right. If you live in London, it's coming to your suburb, and it's going to be something that's going to, uh, to be pretty awful. Um, we've also got a headline here from uh, Telegraph, another British paper. It says, Bilderberg Group, no conspiracy, just the most influential group in the world. 
conspiracy theorists. It's not a cons it's not a theory. They're there. We're taking pictures of them. They're shutting down an entire section of of London here, and it's not a theory. Claim that it is a shadow world government. Former leading members tell the Telegraph it was the most useful meeting they ever went to, and it was crucial in forming the European Union. Oh, okay. So if it's crucial in forming the European Union, then is it a conspiracy theory that it's a shadow government? No. But today the Bilderberg Group is meeting in Britain is what, uh, that's the headlines from the Telegraph. Now I've got a special report here from John Baum, but before we go to it, I want to talk about uh, a couple of things that will help you and will help us to pay the bills for when we do things like cover Bilderberg in London with uh, staff there. If you go to InfoWarsStore.com, you'll see there the Survival Seed Vault. Now, one of the things that's really key about this is the fact that these are heirloom seeds. Now, there's a big difference between selective breeding of seeds and GMO. And if you've been following the news from us and maybe even some other alternative outlets, you're going to hear about the Monsanto court cases. You're going to see that uh, there's been foreign countries have been turning back our wheat supply. They're concerned about contamination of the food supply. Why? Because of GMO. GMO is very, very different from selective breeding. With GMO, they can mix in pesticide uh, into the uh, genetic uh, makeup of this food. They can mix in animal parts into this food. They can do stuff trans-species. So it isn't just that they're refining it through selective breeding. That's what farmers have done for generations. And that's what you're getting with an heirloom seed. You're getting something that people have bred for taste, for health. Sometimes the grocery stores have bred their food for appearance. I remember going to Orlando and eating at a restaurant and they brought out a salad that had heirloom tomatoes and it's first time I had experience with that. They looked absolutely horrible. Some of the ugliest looking tomatoes I've ever seen and the best tomatoes I've ever tasted. That's what you get with heirloom seeds. You get that and you get stuff that's not contaminated with GMO. And that's a concern because even though our Supreme Court unanimously said that Monsanto can do anything they want to in our country, of course they're barred in other countries, even though they can do anything they want to in this country, one of the things that we've got to worry about, which is what we just saw with wheat, is contamination, cross-pollinization. These seeds are sealed in packets and they are kept as heirloom seeds, so it's something you don't have to worry about. This is genetically clean food. So take a look at that at InfoWarsStore.com. Also, we have a ProPure Gravity Filter Special, 15% off through Bilderberg. That's uh, something that we've got a, a new technology filter that ProPure has come out with, a single filter that can remove hydrofluorosilicic acid, which is the most common way that uh, our water supply is polluted with fluoride. They can get that out with that gravity feed filter. And unlike reverse osmosis or distillation, ProPure filters do not eliminate the beneficial minerals that are naturally found in water. So check out those two. You're going to get 15% off of ProPure filters through Bilderberg. So a special going on right there that will help us to pay for the trip to Bilderberg. There's a lot of expenses involved in covering the news, and we don't get massive subsidies from the federal government like MSNBC and others do. And you know, it's not just the economic issues. We see what Bilderberg has been planning since at least their second meeting in 1955, and that is the European Union and the EU and the economic disaster that that has created for the European people. And uh, the way they've been able to put in their own bankers in charge of duly elected democratic leadership. So they're destroying national sovereignty. They're destroying the economies of Europe. And so it's working out just fine for the Bilderberg people, but uh, it's not working out too well for the peoples of Europe. And it's not going to work out too well for the rest of humanity. You know, if you've seen the pictures of when we've been covering the Grove Hotel, you've seen this statue that they've got of a uh, kind of a half-human, half-robot. The flesh is falling off of it as it's crawling on its hands and knees. You can't tell if it's uh, going into the dust or if it's coming up, and it's half-human, half-robot. Well, that is the singularity. They're actually putting out an artwork. They're telling us where they want to go. 
I mean, this unification, there's a picture of it right now on the monitor. Real creepy, real creepy statue. They're telling us where they want to take us. And they've been talking about it. They openly talk about their plans, just as they openly talked about the unification of Europe and openly talked about a world government and a new world order. People don't want to believe where these guys want to go. And it is kind of unbelievable, this singularity. Frankly, I don't believe they can pull it off. I'm a Christian. You're not going to convince me that they can transfer their soul, their consciousness into some kind of a machine. But they can kill a lot of people trying to do it. These are mad scientists. This is from Kurzweil's own website. This is Ray Kurzweil, and he is now the chief scientist for Google. And he is very much into the transhumanism uh, whole thing. He, he's done documentaries on it. He has conferences about it. He is one of the major proponents of it. And now he is the chief scientist of Google. And in this column, he has people, he, he follows technology, and he looks at different things that he thinks are moving in the way for moving in the direction that they're going to allow him to merge with a machine and live forever and become some kind of a god who can travel to the distant stars and live forever. He believes that his he's going to be able to bring back his father's consciousness somehow, his father who's now deceased. This guy is radically crazy, but he is a chief science officer for Google, and he has developed a lot of very impressive technology in the past. He's a very dangerous person, far more dangerous than someone like, say, the Unabomber. Now, here's a question. He said, the, this person says, how are you? My name is Noga. I'm a 16-year-old girl from Tel Aviv, Israel. First of all, I want to say I've read, I've read one of yours, and it was fascinating. Secondly, I want to ask you a question. I'll start from the beginning. She wants to know about human rights and what the line is going to be between human rights and rights for robots as they gain consciousness. She says, as a huge science fiction fan, I chose the subject of human and robot rights in the future. I struggled with a lot of questions, still struggling with them. And I was hoping that you might be able to help me since you deal with robots and machines in the future. And it goes on about that for quite some time. She has a very long question. Now, here's what he has to say. He says, my view of the future is that we will merge with the machines. They are already extensions of ourselves, even if most of them are not yet in our bodies and brains. But technology is shrinking, and by the 2030s, intelligent machines will be the size of blood cells. And we will have millions of nanobots in our bloodstream augmenting our immune system. Oh, he's been talking to Bill Gates, I guess, about his new vaccine program, huh? And going into our brain and extending our thinking into the cloud. The non-biological portion of our intelligence will rapidly expand exponentially, so that by the 2040s, we will be almost entirely non-biological. So we will become the machines. That's what he imagines. And these are the same people who want to see the world's population reduced by anywhere from 90 to 99 percent. See, they want to be the ruling global elite. We're talking about the one percent of the one percent of the one percent. You know, the kind of people that are meeting at Bilderberg, the kind of people that have this eugenics agenda. And they openly proclaim it with things like that statue that's on its knees out there. I don't know what it's called, a Skeletor or something like that. It truly is a creepy skeleton. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. <laughs>